Chapter 2, Superstition. I much prefer the sharpest criticism of a single intelligent man to the thoughtless approval of the masses. Joanne Kepler Prior to creation, there was only the infinite feeling of all existence. Then it arose to create worlds and emanate the created. In the space of that void, it emanated, created, formed, and made all the worlds. I have mentioned this earlier, but now let us present what was created and then hidden over 65,000 years ago, and then rediscovered 3,300 years ago. In spite of this, the fact that they were hidden and then found, the Seretitian, is now again available to all of you who are willing to accept it. Only those in high positions and the few who discovered knew about it over the years. What is a restrictive secret? Why was it kept from being widely known? Who covertly operated this? What is this something that is being kept hidden from the masses? Where did this begin? When did this start? How was this kept from you for so long? The truth is that the secret was always in front of you, yet you choose not to see it. It is related to the universe and how, with your mind, you can become one with vibrating energy. Moreover, at the same time, this energy shapes your personality. Integrating this energy grants your wishes. If you already know the secret to this mystery, then this book or any other similar books out there is of no use to you. Nevertheless, if you feel that you must learn it through reading books, please continue. You should acquire partial knowledge even though you will never attain its full secret and its wisdom. Either you have the gift and power or you just do not. There is no intermediate point. A scribe is a person who writes book or documents by hand as a profession. However, before we had scribes, we did not write down our knowledge and history. We pass them down as words not to just anyone, but to those who have the gift to understand properly. For if we were to write it, it would not be worth remembering, since it could then be misinterpreted and miswritten. Knowledge is gained through reading while wisdom is gained through experience. Both can be attained in the spiritual realm when you are called and you acknowledge it. It does not have to be a physical call. An experience you may have in the physical reality may seem just like a moment to you and everyone else. However, it is quite different while you are having a spiritual experience since it will seem only to you as more than one lifetime. When the time comes when I will wonder what to say or how to phrase it, I shall have my higher source work through me without hesitation. I will have another entity represent me, that which has the same connections, visions, and passions. I shall appoint this other as my spokesperson. Through my higher source, I shall communicate from that moment on. This secretive clandestine now lets you know that only you control how your life will go. It says that if you think positively about what you want in life, you shall have it just as you wish for it. The superstition lets you know that only you control how your life will develop. By consistently impressing your thought with this thinking, you can create that which you think is the meaning of your life you are living at the moment. This extends to your job, relationships, and all other things around you. Your reality is strongly based on what you think and ultimately it changes on a constant basis. You have the power to create your own reality of which only you notice. Let me give you a simple example. You are crossing the street and you make a right turn yet everyone else sees you going left. People will see what they want to see since it is their illusion of what is happening to you. You can fall into the reality of illusion. Before you create, you must emanate it. When you are in doubt now or later, you will not receive what you desire. Understand that time does not truly exist in the spiritual realm. Once you understand and comprehend this reality, 
and delete all present and future doubts, you shall receive your heart's desire. Like praying or wishing, however, the energy you are sending out is only flowing around and is not flying off to where you want it to reach. You are blocking it and do not even realize it. A part of the time you feel and think that you will become wealthy and successful, but the remaining time you are worried about whether you are really going to be wealthy and successful. You are sending out mixed messages to the universe. Do you follow? Yet, if you think that you are already wealthy and successful all the time, the universe will see to it that you are in within a position to make it into a reality. You ask, So now that I know, how do I correct my thoughts? You must intertwine yourself with the universe. This means that you must become one with the universe. For example, if you want to buy a car, you must at least know the model you want and its specific details. Now, what happens if you must have the car before the end of the month, but you are broke? If you truly believe in this philosophy, and you intertwine yourself with the universe using the neutral positive thoughts and picture it without any doubts, you will find the means to get that car by the end of the month. Positive or neutral thought brings positive things. Negative thought brings negative things in your life. Focus. You are born to be this person who you are, this you. Being realistic stops you from living out your dreams and from moving ahead. Learn to be unrealistic so that your dreams become reality. Always keep your eyes on the prize and blinder around you to avoid distraction. Once again, you're most likely looking over what I have written and will say to yourself, what is the point? I am still broke and I have no lover. Now, my two questions to you are, One, why is that? Two, does poverty pull on you? If you do nothing, you will reach poverty. Do you follow? Therefore, to change this, you have to focus on becoming prosperous, both physically and spiritually. You will attract the best in the crop as well as become rich and successful in all aspects of your life if you apply this ancient philosophy. You cannot achieve an understanding of how things work by studying the commentary. It stands to reason that you can only attract by studying charisma and charm or become wealthy by studying success and wealth. You do not study their opposite, meaning being unattractive, being unloving, failure, or poverty. Do you agree? So, If you think every day that you will never have the kind of money you only dream of or that you should never find the one in your life that will fulfill you, then read on. In 1910, Wallace De Los Walters wrote that health as a study of disease will increase disease. Economy as a study of poverty will serve only to increase poverty. Consequently, you must focus your mind on prosperity consciousness and contract to poverty consciousness. So whatever you do, do not acknowledge failure as a bad thing. It is designed to be a stepping stone to success. Do you follow? Walter also states in the first part of his book, of a three-part series, The Science of Getting Rich, that you have a right to be rich. Furthermore, he also states that becoming so is a science and not luck. He writes that there are only two ways to become wealthy. One is negative and the other is positive. The negative way is through bidding competitively for wealth. Now, do not misunderstand this. By declaring this, he does not mean that competition in general is bad. Rather, it means that when you are aiming for something that exists in abundance, such as wealth, being competitive is an extreme and is counterproductive. As a result, it has a multiple and negative processory effect. You are only focused on your self-interest and not others. The positive alternative is through creation. 
When you become wealthy the creative way, you make it easier for others around you to become wealthy as well. This also affects those who come after you. He talks about the super wealthy becoming outdated. As I mentioned before, he discussed how in order to become wealthy, you must focus on prosperity and not poverty. He has described many reasons why it is noble and honorable to pursue to becoming wealthy via the creative method. He explains how you can only become all that you can be if you have enough money to clothe, educate, shelter, and develop, as well as nourish yourself more than just adequately. In order to satisfy that these needs, you must become wealthy and doing this in a creative capacity is the honorable path. Do not be competitive. When you start doing good things naturally, when you no longer have to make an effort to do good things, then you will start to comprehend this philosophy. Walter writes about use value and cash value and describes how you should always give more in use value than what you receive in cash value. For example, if you have a painting that is valued at $2,000 but you sell it to a person who has no appreciation for arts at a much lower price, you have lost cash value in the process. Am I correct? Unless he's a dealer. Walter also writes, about how one must be willing to turn away any and all business that does not give customer more use value than the cash value they give you. He also says that because of this, the economy should be going into a slight deflation on a constant basis. He seems to have proven this repeatedly even in today's market 100 years later. People move away from the poverty mentality when they realize that they have a birthright to have and enjoy wealth in general. This realization leads people to being generous. So if you are positive and can use negative to boost your confidence and self-esteem, then do so. Every person who becomes rich by competition kicks down the ladder by which he rises and keeps others down. But... Every person who gets rich by creation opens a way for thousands to follow him and inspires them to do so. The middle class worships formal education because they understand it. It's leoner. Creating wealth is non leoner by nation. It is offered a straight and narrow path to follow. There will be as many millionaires as there are college student. Seek formal education for the love of learning. Seek riches by teaching yourself to think in non-conventional ways. The key to success when small potential influence the large scene is to avoid pretentious ambition and grander goal. The power of the small is served by slow and steady advancement and success through an honest awareness of its own limitation without reservation. You cannot get off the path you are on because the path isn't narrow. It is spectacle. It includes the whole planet. Anywhere you put your foot is your path. Even the idea that you are not on the path is part of the path. Whatever is next to you, Whatever you are struggling with right now is the key to your liberation. Don't resist your experience. Whatever it is, embrace it. If you're brave enough to risk to temporarily live outside of your comfort zone for a short period of time, you're big enough to win. If you take time to ponder on what you want from life, you will discover the key to achieving your heart's desire. Until then, you are just blown by the wind. You are a person who reaches instead of who creates. Those of you who truly lack or who are meek do not need charity. What you require is inspiration and hope. Charity only lasts for a moment while inspiration and hope will lead those of you in poverty to rise up to prosperity. 
Those who have low self-esteem and confidence have lost their faith in life. Faith always starts with yourself. This means you must love yourself first, the supreme being next, and then finally others. Once you fully understand and apply this, you will be able to afford to take risk causing dramatic changes in your life. You will recover faster, stronger, and smarter from every setback you will face. If your job is structured and based on competition, then you are solely working for your own benefits on a commission basis and not with your colleagues. In this situation, you are only thinking of yourself and making your own sales. Creatively, on the other hand, is more like you working as a team player and not solo so that those who are your colleagues benefit with you. In this way, you receive a team bonus pay, not a solo one. This way, you are happy to help your colleagues, clients, since it would not matter who writes the sale. Working together instead of against each other in competition to achieving success. I hope you see the advantage of a team bonus rather than an individual incentive.